Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Beth and I am the Bookworm Trait. And today I am bringing you my top five books of 2020. Now, whilst I have spent most of 2020 in a bit of a reading slump, I was surprised to find that the majority of books I've read are actually three stars or above, which I would consider a pretty good reading year. So it was quite hard to narrow this list down to five and therefore I do have two honourable mentions on this list as well. One of them I am going to discuss later on in this video, but the first one I want to mention is Bunny by Mona Awad. Awad? Awad. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> Bunny is one of my favourite books that I have read this year. Sadly, it didn't quite make it into the top five, but it's like number six and it was really close and I just wanted to talk about it. Bunny is about a girl called Samantha who is doing an MFA in creative writing. She's on the same course as I believe four other girls and the other girls have their own kind of clique, which they call the bunnies. Samantha finds herself being very judgmental of these girls. She thinks they are ridiculous. But despite this, she finds herself being pulled into their circle and some really weird fucked up stuff happens. <laughs> this is probably one of the weirdest and most difficult to understand books that I have ever read. And that is honestly what I love about it. The only reason that this book didn't make it into the top five is because it was so weird that I really don't understand it. And therefore I just didn't think I could put it on the top five list. But I would highly recommend this. If you're ever in the mood to read something that you just do not understand, this is the book for you. So now moving on to my actual top five books and we are going to start with Ninth House. So this was number five. Ninth House is about a girl called Alex Stern who has the ability to see ghosts. Now, because of this, Alex is enlisted to join one of the secret societies of Yale, the Ninth House, <laughs> also known as Leaf. Well, I think it's Lethe. I think that's how it's actually pronounced but the way that it's spelled in the UK, you would pronounce that as Leaf. So because of her ability to see ghosts, Alex has been enlisted to join Leaf or Ninth House or Lethe, despite the fact that she's not the brightest crayon in the pack. She's not dumb, but she's definitely not Yale material. The job of Leaf is to keep the other houses in line. All the other houses have some kind of magical powers and Leith is there to make sure that they don't do anything they shouldn't. Now, during Alex's first year, her mentor Darlington goes missing and Alex is left to try and uncover the mysteries around a suspicious murder. As someone who has tried to read Shadow and Bone, didn't like it, tried to read Six of Crows, didn't like it, I did not have high hopes going into Ninth House. I did not think this was going to be my kind of book. I just felt like maybe Lee Bardugo was not my kind of author. But I absolutely loved this. I found myself so intrigued in the plot. I really enjoyed the characters. And I cannot wait to read the next book in this series. I don't think there's been a date yet for when it's going to be released. But... I'm waiting. So number four on my best books of 2020 is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Now apologies that there is no cover on this book. You will have to take my word for it that it is The Midnight Library. I've decided to display this without the dust jacket because I just really love the colour of the hardback and I didn't want to dig it out for this video. <laughs> the Midnight Library is about a girl called Nora who is really struggling with her mental health. Nora lives her life with a lot of regret and she decides that she is going to commit suicide. After taking her own life, Nora wakes up in a library called the Midnight Library where she is given the option to try again. Nora is given the opportunity to experience many of her alternate lives and all she has to do is find the one where she's truly happy and she'll be able to live on in that life. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this book, as I'm sure you've guessed, suicide is one. So please make sure that you check this before reading. But I can say for me, I am someone who can be very, very triggered by mental health representation in books. And I actually found this more uplifting than upsetting. I'm also someone who is 
fascinated with the idea of alternate lives and parallel universes so this was like my perfect book when i tell you that i think about this book almost every night before i go to sleep and start thinking well what if i'd have done this differently what would my life be like it's a problem it's taken over my life <laughs> this book has a really beautiful message to it and honestly this was just the kind of thing that I needed to read in 2020 when it's been a bit of a rough year for all of us. <laughs> so the third book in this list is also going to include my second honourable mention and these are the two books by Sally Rooney. Ow. Ow. And this is the two books by Sally Rooney, Normal People and Conversations with Friends. So Conversations with Friends is my honourable mention and whilst I think I enjoy the characters in conversations with friends more this book broke me <laughs> and not in a good way so whilst i think i enjoyed the characters in conversations with friends more i think plot wise i prefer normal people but it's close so we'll start with the honorable mention conversations with friends so this book follows two best friends francis and bobby they previously had a romantic relationship though now they are just friends. And they meet a couple, Nick and Melissa, who are older and very successful in their careers. A friendship forms between the four of them. And over the course of the book, it gets more confusing, more involved, more romantic, more destructive. This book has a lot of triggers such as mental health, infertility and self-harm. And this was incredibly triggering read for me. However, I love this book. I enjoyed this book. When I am in a better mental state, I would like to reread this book, but it's just not quite as good as Normal People. So Normal People is probably Sally Rooney's better known book, especially as we had the BBC drama this year, which perfection. So this is the story of Connell and Marianne, who grew up in the same small town in Ireland. They are very different people. Um, when we start the book, Connell is very popular, very well liked, whereas Marianne is kind of the school weirdo and she's kind of looked down on. People don't really like her or warm to her. Despite this, Connell and Marianne strike up a friendship which later evolves into something more romantic. And we follow them throughout their late school years, their years at university and then onwards as they try to maintain healthy relationships with each other and other people. Again, lots of trigger warnings in this book. And again, this book broke me, as did the BBC drama. I just think Sally Rooney is an amazing writer. I love how she writes these really claustrophobic and very real stories. And she will be an instant buy for me in the future. And I just want her to write something else soon because I've run out. So number two on my top five books of 2020 has only recently lost its top spot by a hair's width and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke and if you know me you know that I have been raving about this book. I love this book. I'm going to take a crack at explaining this but I might not do a very good job because it's one of them tricky ones. So this book is about a guy called Piranesi. He is our main character and he lives in this world that he calls the house. The house is kind of like some Roman palace-esque thing. And this book is told in diary entries of his day-to-day -day life in the house. There is only one other living person that he comes into contact with and he calls this person the other. The other and him meet weekly or bi-weekly to discuss their search for the great knowledge. And I don't really want to say any more than that because this is, as you can see, a very, very short book and I wouldn't want to spoil it for anybody. This is one of the best things I have read in a long time. <laughs> I think if you like liked the idea of The Starless Sea but you didn't like the book, you would like this. I think if you like Lainey Taylor's writing, then you you would like this. It's incredibly atmospheric. There's a huge emphasis on world building. It has this kind of mythological vibe to it, which I am all about. The character of Piranesi is probably one of my favourite characters ever, or Piranesi, whatever it's called. He has this really 
sweet naivety to him which as a reader is very stressful because you figure out what's going on a lot quicker than he does and you love him and you want to protect him and you can't and you know things are going badly <laughs> i can't really say much more than that because i really wouldn't want to spoil this for anyone because it was just such a fun time reading and it was definitely the kind of book that i just could not put down and although i've heard it's very different to jonathan norrell and mr strange i definitely want to pick that book up now even though it's gigantic because of how much i love this okay so the number one book of the year and when i tell you this book i am so shocked <laughs> I did not think this was going to be my number one book of the year, but I, I can't not put it at number one. That is Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. If you had asked me in February if this was going to be my number one book of the year, I would tell you this is probably going to be my worst books of 2020 because I found myself despising fantasy, uh, specifically YA fantasy. I know this isn't YA fantasy. And I tried to read this book and dnf'd it because i just i just wasn't feeling it but then later on this year i just had a, an urge to pick it up and oh my god i was so invested in the characters in this book i was so invested in the story in this book this book is about a girl called bryce who lives in crescent city which is like a fantasy world but with a lot of technology and stuff in it so it resembles our world but it's a fantasy world bryce is enlisted to investigate a string of murders which are currently happening in crescent city um alongside a sexy brooding angel by the name of hunt i was very surprised with how good the fantasy in this book actually was it's been a long time since i read the akatar series and you hear so much bad stuff about Akatar that I actually forgot how much I enjoyed that. And so it was really nice to go back to it and just be like, oh my God, actually, I don't care what the haters say. I love it. <laughs> I just think the plot in this book was genuinely good. I thought the characters in this book were just perfection. They were all so real and so individual, even characters that were barely on the page. You had such a sense for them. So Bryce's boss is called Jessica and she, she barely appears in this book. But yet you feel like you know exactly what Jessica would be like. This book made me cry so much and usually when i cry in a book it is because i've been triggered by something to do with mental health i cried because of a event that happened in this book which never that never happens and if it does it's like one tear <laughs> maybe two but i was like full-on sobbing at this book it's honestly just made me so excited to read the next book in the akatar series which i was kind of feeling like I didn't want to read but I'm so excited to continue with that and I just loved this I just loved this so much and I don't know who I am anymore I've lost my identity <laughs> so those were my top books of 2020 thank you so much for watching this video if you've made it this far please leave me your favorite love heart emoji in the comments down below or let me know what your favourite book of the year has been. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. And hopefully you'll come back and see me in another video soon. Bye.